Welcome everyone to part four and the last part in this Blender tutorial series on how to create this sci-fi robot drone animation in Blender EV. So in the last part, we had just finished the character. So we had done the texture painting, set up the materials and all that. And I just kind of set up a basic pose right here. And in this part, we're going to be doing all the animation. We're going to be setting up this cool sci-fi environment with like some smoke and a background. Really cool. So. Let's go ahead and start the tutorial. Now, before we start, I am gonna be downloading this super awesome control panel sci-fi room image on Pixabay. The link will be in the video description for this. And if you've purchased my tutorial, then this is going to be in the project files. So you can just go ahead and grab that. But if you're watching this on YouTube, just go ahead and download this. I'm just gonna download the biggest one, download that, and then let's go back into Blender and do the animation. So to start off, let's just select the rig controller so we can select the entire thing i'm just going to go back into the solid view and i'm going to just go right here and i actually want this to be uh 1920 by 1080 so that it works well for youtube and stuff like that so i'm going to click right here and then right here i'm just going to change this to 1080 so it's 1920 by 1080 so it's a better image resolution and then also let me just turn on my screencast keys so you can see what buttons I'm pressing right down there in the corner. Okay, I'm just gonna select my main controller and I'm just gonna bring it over here. Just bring the robot kind of out of the scene because we're gonna have the robot come into the scene, kind of look around and then fly out. So I'm just gonna move it kind of back here, something like that. Okay, that's probably good. So I'll just move it right there. I'm also gonna rotate this on the Z axis. Just bring it over there. So when the robot first comes into the scene, I wanna have all of his arms like kind of tucked in him because maybe he's in like a travel mode and then but then when he comes into the scene he's going to open up like his hands and arms and all that kind of stuff so let's just uh i'm going to press period on the number pad to zoom over to the robot and i'm just going to set up the robot so that uh he is all tucked away so i'm just going to like rotate this in and then rotate these back just selecting these objects and pressing r to rotate them and tuck the robot's arms right up into him that he's very small and can you know travel correctly and you know things like this try not to make this happen because that isn't really realistic i think i'm actually going to rotate it the other way maybe rotate this one back a little bit there we go maybe rotate this down really do whatever you want to do um, i'm going to rotate this one back okay that's what i'm going to do i think actually this is coming out a little bit so i'm going to rotate that just so that it's tucked in a bit more Okay, that's good. I'm just gonna start with that. So let's go here. I'm gonna actually click on this and go R, Z and just rotate it a little bit more so it's looking sideways. We'll just bring it right there. Okay, now I want this to be the starting position. Um, I do need to pull up a timeline though so I can animate. So I'm just gonna grab this, bring it up and then I'm gonna change this to uh, the timeline right there. And let me just move myself so that I'm a little bit out of the way. All right, so I'm gonna start off by going to frame one. So I'm gonna move this over. You can also just uh, type this in and type in one. So we're at frame one. And then I'm gonna have this animation be about 400 frames and I am using the 24 frames per second. That's the default. So I'm just gonna click on this and change it to about 400 so that we kind of know how long the animation is gonna be. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is actually this, I don't wanna animate this. So I'm just gonna press H to hide it just so that it gets out of the way. It's not gonna be in the way of anything. I'm just gonna press B and box select this whole entire thing. And then lastly, shift select this. And then what I wanna do is I want to turn on the auto key and that's this button right here. And what that does is it makes it so it automatically adds a keyframe whenever we scale, rotate or move something. So I'm gonna turn that on. And then what I want to do for the first keyframe is press I, and this will bring up the insert keyframe menu. And I want to click on the location, rotation, and scale. And that way you can see if I click on the different objects, there are keyframes for all the different objects. Okay, so now I'm just going to move to where I want the robot to be about in the scene. I use the space bar to, plus, to press play. You could also just click on this button. So I'm going to play it, kind of let it go out and kind of think about how long I want the robot to come in something probably around here. And then let me just, I'm just gonna select this, press G, bring it over, and then maybe double tap R or R and Z and rotate it just a little bit. Something kind of like that. Okay, then if I go back, you can see there's the animation. It's added these keyframes right in here. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, I wanna make the robot maybe like come over here, like it's kind of looking around. So I'm gonna uh, 
press G, move this over, rotate it a little bit. So kind of like it's flying forward. If you want to move around the keyframes, you can select the top one with that object selected. Just click on the top one and it's going to select all the others. Let me just make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. And then if I press G, I can move that around. So you can see if I pull that around, it's going to change the speed. Okay, and then I want to go a little bit forward and I'm just going to rotate this back a little bit and move this forward just a little bit. Okay, now I want to change the animation speed. So when I'm just playing this, I want to move this around here. Okay, so what I want to do is make it so that it kind of comes forward and then kind of goes back and stops. So I think this keyframe, we actually don't need it. So I'm going to select it, press X and then delete keyframes. Now this one right here, I'm going to move it a bit more forward and rotate it a bit more. And then I think also the starting keyframe, he needs to be uh, tilted forward a bit because he's already moving. So I'm going to go back to this start frame and just move right on top of it. And that way it'll just override that keyframe. So I'm just going to rotate this down a little bit. Okay. Now if I go into camera mode, press play, you can see it kind of comes. Then he like, let me just move this back a little bit just to change the speed a little bit. Now from here to, so almost a hundred to maybe around 250 or something. I want him to just kind of be hovering around. So I'm going to rotate this, press R, Z, kind of rotate him over and just kind of move him over to something like that. Okay. So now over here, he's just kind of slowly moving from here over to here. Let me just select the top one G and move it over. Actually, you don't need to select the top one. You can just grab the whole thing, bring it over. Maybe 300 would be a bit better. Yeah, I think 300 is a bit better. So almost to around 300. Of course, you can totally animate this however you want. And then after this, I just want the robot to go out of the scene. So I'm just going to move over to the ending. So at 400 and just rotate him over and forward and kind of make him flying back and up and out of the scene. So he's kind of hovering away. There we go. Maybe make that a little bit faster. So just drag these two keyframes together. I think I want this to even be at like 350 or something because I want him to fly away somewhat quickly. Okay. Now right around in the middle here, I'm going to make him like fly up a little bit more, maybe rotate it a little bit. All right. So that's just going to be the basic movement for the main rig. So now what I want to do is just uh, animate some of the other values. So the first thing I'm going to do is just select the head and animate this so we can just make the head however we want. So I'm going to have it going in, rotate this on the Z you can, and then I'll rotate this. Just kind of make him looking forward. Maybe make him looking over here. Then as he comes over here, I'm going to uh, rotate it. So right now you can see that's a little hard to rotate. You can move up and then press R to rotate that. Or what you can do is just press R and Z and that'll rotate. So he's going to kind of look over here. He's going to like go whoop. Okay. Maybe pull that back a little bit. And then I think it's cool that his head like rotates all the way around. So as he's going over here, I'm going to have him like look maybe towards you or something. Maybe have it rotate right in between here. Maybe have it rotate on the Z to kind of, so he kind of looks back. And then from, uh, from about 200 to maybe around 250, I want him to rotate his entire head. So I'm going to press, uh, so I'm going to go to about 250 and then press R Z rotate his head all the way around. And then if I just watch that, he's kind of scanning or something. That's a little too fast. So I'm going to pull it out to maybe like 300, pull this one back maybe a little bit. Okay. And then right before he flies away, I kind of want him to look where he's going. So I'm going to rotate this on the Z, make him kind of looking that way. And then whoosh, maybe rotate it a little bit more. And there he goes. Looks over, flies away. Okay. So there we go. That's what I'm going to do for the head. Pretty easy to do. Let me just watch through that again. You could even go into rendered mode if you want. Oh, it's still loading up the texture. Okay, there we go. Let's animate the legs. The legs I find <laughs> really, really uh, make the character animation look cool. So I'm going to go right about here. And then right when he's kind of stopping, the legs are going to kind of open up. So they're, they're all going to open up kind of at the same time. So I'm just going to select a leg. And you can see that there's one keyframe. I added a keyframe to all the objects right at the starting. So when I go over here, if I now rotate the leg, it's going to be opening up the entire time. And I don't want that to happen because it's going to transition as smoothly as it can from this keyframe to this keyframe. So I don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to delete this. What I want to do is move over to, over to about uh, here, right when I want the arm to move out, just press G and then click. 
that'll add another keyframe and you can see there's those lines right there and i think what that is is there's a keyframe but nothing's changing and then what, what i'm gonna do is just now go to the spot where i want it to be open more and then i can rotate it so i can rotate this up go back here uh this one i want it to be staying where it is until here so i'm gonna press g and then click then rotate and kind of rotate it up so i find i find this really fun to animate let's just move this i'll press g click right there to add a keyframe move this up i'm just gonna have like the the guns come out and then maybe the guns are like moving around with his um eyeball like he's kind of like looking around when you're animating really try to think about giving the robot some amount of character because you know this is this isn't realistic this is kind of like a sci-fi futuristic robot but robots just like regular characters like creatures or humans or something they have you know character to them and they feel alive so just kind of think about that while you're animating what i'm going to do is make the robot's guns point wherever the robot is looking just at the starting because he's kind of like looking around like is there anybody that i need to fire my laser guns at so what i'm going to do is you can see he moves right there so i'm going to uh click on this rotate rotating one this arm that's rotating i will pr uh, press g and then click and then i'm going to move over here and rotate it on the z and that way he's kind of like oh and then maybe right here just kind of rotate it back a bit and then maybe right here rotate it forward a little bit and maybe now his guard is down a little bit more so this i'm going to press g and then click move over and then maybe make it kind of go down a little bit because maybe he's like okay there's no one you know there's no one there so i think just really thinking about kind of the story and thinking about his character can really help to make the animation better there we go so he's like oh okay now you can see here this is way too fast because he's like cool, cool, cool. so i'm gonna just pull these out to make them a little less and then also right here this one i'm actually going to delete this keyframe because I don't want it to be moving that fast. There we go. That looks better. And then at, I, I think just having the arms kind of moving a little bit help the whole time. So I'm just going to move over here. Just kind of rotate the arms a little bit. Just kind of give these little bits of rotation just so that he looks more alive and just just everything's moving just a little bit, you know. This object, I might even have it rotate down a little bit. And of course, we're going to animate the other arms too to move out of the way. But I think it's just, it's better, I think it's better to animate one, uh, one arm at a time. Okay, let's just watch through that. I'm going to go into rendered mode again just to see how that's looking. Okay, so let's just go back here. And then um, something that I want to do right here, I think I want to kind of change the rotation a little bit. So I'll just kind of give it some keyframes. Maybe rotate this a little bit. I think just, you know, adding little tiny bits of detail, like in the animation, like just as it's rotating, you could just animate that coming up. Um, I think that can really help. Now, when he moves, his body is being moved forward. And so his limbs would probably move back. Like if you just suddenly start running, your limbs are kind of probably going to fly back because, you know, you're starting to run and your arms haven't caught up yet. So uh, I think this can really help to sell that effect and make it look a bit more realistic. So right when he starts to move, I'm going to add keyframes here. So just click on these and press G. And then once I've added keyframes on all those, I'm going to make him start to move forward. And I'm going to make his limbs kind of fly back. Like if you're running, it's like if you're wearing a scarf and you start to run, your scarf's going to like look like it's kind of going back, but you're actually just moving forward really fast. Kind of like in those cartoons where like somebody grabs someone on the shoulder and yanks them and their legs, like it takes a while for their legs to catch up or something when they're being pulled. So now I'm just going to move here, kind of make this kind of being pulled out. So now he's like, whoop. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now his gun, you know, he's probably going to tuck his gun in a little bit. So I'm going to just like tuck this in. You can see if I'm moving on top of a keyframe and then animating, I know that it's not going to add another keyframe. It's just going to override that keyframe and kind of change it. Okay, so that's good for now. Of course, you know, you can totally play around with this later. I just kind of need to see what the whole thing is looking like, though. So I'm going to move on to the next one. Okay, now <laughs> that could be a problem. So let me just click on the master control, go to the last keyframe and just pull it out even further. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's go to the next one. Actually, let's save this again. File save. Make sure to always be saving so that you don't lose your progress. Let's go 
uh, to the next one. And um, also, you don't have to animate in the camera view. I do like animating in the camera view, or at least having the camera view in view, because, you know, that's what you're going to see at the end of the animation when the animation is all finished. So something you could do is click right here with your cursor on the crosshair, drag that out, and it's going to break the window. And then this one, you could have this be the camera. And then this, if you want to animate it kind of all around, you could do that. So you can see right above me, there's the main animation. And then right here, you can just animate it. So that's something that you can do if you want to do that. You could even throw this into rendered mode to see how it's looking. Okay, so let's animate the next one. So I'm going to animate one of these claws now. Now, um, I want to have like the claw kind of like, you know, like a crab, like, I want to have it do that just because I don't know, it'll make it look cool and give some character to him and also make him look a little bit intimidating. So I'm going to just, uh, again, go to the spot where I want him to come in. And then so probably I want the arm to start opening probably about here. So G click and then click on this one, press G and click. You can see I have one of the arms, one of the claw hands selected. Just uh, add keyframes on all those. And then let's go forward. I'm just gonna go into the camera mode. I think it's just easier for me. You can totally do whatever works for you, but I just think being in the camera mode most of the time, uh, it feels the most comfortable to me. Okay, now right about here, I want him to be fully opened up. So I'm gonna just like rotate this, rotate this. I want to have a good silhouette of his arm, so I'm going to rotate it over, and that way uh, it, you're just going to be able to see it a lot better. Okay, I need to rotate this a back bit a little bit because I forgot to add a keyframe right in the center there. Let's go back into camera view. Okay, now he's going to open up pretty fast. That's a little too fast. I want to just bring that out a little bit. Rotate this up a little bit. Okay, this one rotate up a little bit. That's good. I think it's a little too far out though. So I'm going to pull that back in, click on this, pull it back out. Now, when he's just kind of moving right here, I want his claw hands to go. <laughs> so let's go over, pull this back a little bit. Okay. Then here's where I want his claw hands to kind of snap. So I'm just going to add keyframes right here with all these objects. And then I'll go over here, just go a little ways, open his claw hands up, move a little bit more forward, just like five frames or something and then snap his uh his claws back together you know you can make a short film with this guy that would be super cool you could even do like vfx and maybe have you could like hand him something that would be really cool uh that'd be some really cool vfx we can totally play around with the timing move it a little bit more out i think the timing is pretty good though and then go a bit more and maybe snap his hand his uh claw arms together one more time and then just go a little bit farther and he kind of just can kind of rest those arms. Now you can see I added a keyframe here so it's slowly going down but I don't really want that so I'm going to move back then rotate it up and now you can see it transitions. Okay let's see how that's looking. Um, okay I think it's good I just want it to be a little bit faster so I'm just going to pull everything together a little bit tighter. So what I can do is I want these two claw hands to, I want to change the animation speed of all of them. So I can shift click on both of these and then click on this and move it. And that way they'll both be moved together. So I'm just going to pull these together. These keyframes here, make it a little bit faster. There we go. That that's good. Boom, boom. So it's like snap, snap. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of like an octopus or something or a squid. I don't know. And then maybe, maybe he can kind of rest his arm. So just kind of move it down a little bit. He's a little bit off of his guard now. He's done showing off his cool, his cool claw arm. So he's just kind of resting it a little bit. Maybe rotate it a little bit. So rotate that and then move over, rotate it over a little bit. Hopefully you're able to follow along with this. I haven't done very many animation tutorials, so let me know how I'm doing with the, you know, teaching style. If I need to be more specific, then you can just let me know and I'll try to do that in the future. As he's moving right here, I think I want to just rotate this maybe back and maybe in a little bit. Maybe just rotate these down a little bit. That looks kind of cool. It kind of swivels over and then swivels back. Maybe I'll just make that a little more um, pronounced where it kind of swivels over and then swivels back. And then once again, right here, just, just a little movement. Now his arm is kind of in front of him, but I just want to make it 
kind of coming back a little bit because of like the force that he's moving forward. So I'm just going to select, actually I'll rotate this forward a bit because maybe that's kind of his arm right in front of him. Then I will maybe rotate these up a little bit. Just add keyframes on all these by pressing G and then just clicking. And then right here, as he kind of moves forward, I'll just press period and zoom into that. I'll just kind of pull his arm back a little bit and towards himself. Like the force of him moving forward is making his arms come back just a little bit. Okay, maybe pull this in a bit so it's more forceful. Let's save this again, file save. So we have two more arms or limbs, whatever you want to call them, two more to animate. And then after that, let's just kind of assess the scene and see how that's doing. And then of course, we'll be adding this cool sci-fi background and rendering this out to a finished animation. Okay, looking really cool now. Let's do the, uh, let's do the little scanner thing, the little like test drill. Maybe it's like scanning for rocks or something or whatever it is. About here, just kind of add some keyframes. Just kind of add some keyframes. I'm just going to have him kind of point it kind of down. So I'll just open, open up his arm there. See how that's looking. This one's kind of in the background and I don't want it to be too crazy, you know, busy. So I'm just going to make this one pretty easy. Something I'm going to try is from here to here, I'm actually going to rotate this around kind of like, you know, his head's rotating back. So I'm going to kind of bring that around. I think that looks cool. It kind of goes with that. And now it's kind of pointed on the other side. Maybe rotate this down a little bit. And then when he goes forward, just add some keyframes right before he starts moving forward. If you want to move per keyframe, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard and then I'll move between each frame. Pull that back a little bit so that let's see how that's looking. Whoosh. Yes. Okay. Um, this one, let's see, maybe rotate that down and down a little bit more. Whoosh. Okay. Sweet. So that one's done for now. Let's go file and save this again. I'm just going to do the last, the last arm here. So just pretty much doing the same thing. Um, you could have this arm doing something if you want. Let's see. I, I want to make sure the limbs aren't going through themselves at all. That looks pretty good right there though. The arm goes through the other one. So I'll just make sure with the animation, that's not gonna be messed up. So just adding keyframes, you can press R or G or whatever, but it's going to add a keyframe there and then go forward, kind of bring this down, bring this down. Let's see. Now you can see there, they're kind of going through each other. So I'm going to bring this keyframe over here that I added, bring this down a little bit. Okay. Pretty good. But I think maybe we should, uh, make it the whole entire limb rotate that way. So it's a little more, you know, moved out of the way of the other arms. There we go. That's super cool. And then this maybe rotate it up a little bit and maybe move this over or something. And what I'm doing here is, is as I rotate this, I'm also moving these hinges over. So it's kind of like the fingers are kind of hanging on the arm. So they kind of like, you know, move over. It makes it look a little bit more organic. And then as, as it just kind of doesn't move, just kind of make the, the arms or the fingers kind of sag like that. So they're kind of just hanging there. It gives him more of an organic feel, makes him just have a little bit more character, I think. Okay, now you can't really see that, so I want it, I want to be able to see that. So I'm going to rotate this up, maybe rotate. I'll go to the, the keyframe right here, rotate this up a little bit, rotate it uh, this way a little bit, and then uh, right about, by the time it gets to here, I want it to be rotated this way a little bit, and that way when he goes forward, Again, the force of gravity kind of pulling his arms back a little bit makes it feel a bit more realistic. Rotate this one. Okay. Let's see how that's looking. Okay. So that we need to um, pull this back a little bit. So I'm going to rotate this in a bit more so that when he moves out, whoosh, there we go. Get that timing right. All right. And then here it kind of starts to slow down and move away. So what I'm going to do is just pull this forward, uh, select the main rig and just bring it up a little bit more. All right. So I may just go back and do a little bit of changes, just a little bit of tweaking. Um, but for now that's good. And I'm going to go ahead and set up all the other stuff. So like the smoke and the sci-fi background.
So I'm going to turn off the auto keying. Make sure you turn that off because now that we're not animating, we don't want to add keyframes all over the place. I'm going to press shift C to bring the 3D cursor in the center there. I'll push shift A. Let's add the image and we're going to add images as planes. And then just grab that texture that I talked about at the starting of the tutorial. And then when you click on it, don't double click on it. Just select it once and bring this panel up and we don't want it to be principled. We want it to be emission. So just click on that and then click on import images as planes. So now if we go into rendered mode, you can see it's just a background, just an emission. We can scale this up and put it behind the robot. So I actually want to move it really far behind the robot because I want it to be blurred. So I'll move it way back here, scale it up and then go into camera mode and really just rotate it around and make it look good in the camera because the camera is the only thing that's going to be seeing it. So I want to scale it up and maybe kind of pull it back a little bit. Okay, now let's add the uh, depth of field. So I'm going to select the camera right here. Let's click on the camera settings right down here, and I'm going to turn on the depth of field. Now when we turn that on, we're going to need to have a fo focus object. The I want the focus object to be the robot's head. So I'm just going to move over to the robot's head, and then the focus object, you can click on the... Uh, click on this button that's the like the color picker click on that we're going to click on the circle which is the robot's head so click on that we'll go into camera mode and go into rendered mode and then you can see it's not really doing anything right now that's because we need to change the f-stop so if i change the f-stop way down to like a 0.1 you can see what it's doing now that's too strong so let me just turn it up okay let's try 0.4 just render that out and see how it's looking I think that's good because it is kind of blurry, but once, once he stops moving, let me just like render that out and see. Yep. Okay. I think that's good. Now this background here, I want to pull it out even farther because I want it to be more blurred. So if it's farther away, it's going to be more blurred and then just scale that up and let's go ahead and add that smoke now. So I'm going to press shift a and um, to add the smoke, we need to add a cube. So I'm going to add a cube and I'm going to scale this cube up. Let me just zoom out here, scale it up so that the camera is in it and also make sure the robot is in it. So somewhat big, something like that. Move it around. You can just rotate it if you want. So that's how it's looking right now. What we're going to do is now add a material that's going to add this kind of foggy, smoky look. So let's go over here to the materials, add a new material. You can just call it like fog. And then let's go over to the shading tab and go into wireframe. I mean, rendered mode, go into rendered mode so we can see what it's looking like. Now I don't want this principled. So I'm just going to click on it and press X to delete. I'll press shift a, I'm going to search for principled volume. So just grab that principled volume and stick it right here. And then I don't want the volume into the surface. I want this volume to be in the volume. So if I do that, now you can see, and you can see if I look on the edges of this cube, it kind of looks like smoky fog. Um, it's way too strong right now. So I'm going to turn this density down to like a 0.1. You can see now you can see the robot, but it's a little bit hard to see. I'm going to make this like a 0 0.05, so it's even less. Now, right now, this is really boring. What I want to do is make it look like there's a little like clouds. So to do that, I can add a noise texture. So I'll press shift A just going to search for a noise texture. What I'm going to do is plug the color into the density and you can see that's actually going to mess up uh, what we've done here. So, and then before we keep going, I am going to be using the node wrangler add-on to enable that. You can go edit preferences and then on the add-ons here, search for node wrangler. If you don't have that enabled already, it's a super great add-on. I'll use it all the time. Now what I'm going to do with the node wrangler enabled is I'm going to click on this press control T and that's going to add this texture coordinate and mapping. And I want to plug the object up to the vector here. So now if I control shift and click on the noise texture, that's using another feature with the node wrangler, I can change the scale and make the size of the smoky fog. Then what I can do is just control shift and click back on the volume and I'm going to press shift a, and I'm going to search for a color ramp because you can see here that it's still, you still can't really tell where there's fog and where it's there's not fog. And this is because the fog is too strong. So you can't really tell where there's more fog and less fog. So what I'm going to do is drag this value down. And what you can see is happening is now it's a lot less strong. And some of the places have more fog and some of the places have less. So just drag that and get it to the amount of fog that you want. And then we're still playing out the animation. The fog is just kind of sitting there. It's kind of boring. So what I want to do now is animate the fog so that it's moving. So you can see the location. 
you can just change the x value because x is going to go back and forth and we want to move it on a negative value so that the smoke goes from this side and moves over to that side. So what I'm going to do is go back to layout here. Just make sure that we're on frame one or zero. We'll go back to the shading tab and then I want to add a keyframe on that value. So I'm going to hover my mouse over it and then I'll press I and that will add the keyframe right there. Now I'm going to go back to layout over here, move to the very last frame or just a little bit after. I'll go back to the shading tab and then move this pretty far maybe to like a negative four or something and then press I again. And now if I play this animation, you can see it starts to move a little bit faster. Um, what we want to do is we want to make the smoke kind of move at a consistent rate. So to do this, we're going to need to open the graph editor. So I'm going to click right up here, drag this out and that'll bring up another window. And then we want to change this to the graph editor. So I'm going to click right here change it to the graph editor. There it is right there. And then if you don't see anything, that's because you need to select the object. So make sure that is selected and then make sure the mapping is selected. And you can see here, here is the fog and you can see here's the animation for it. So you can see um, if I just go into this, so you can see here is the animation. It starts out, goes really fast and then it slows back down. So what I'm going to do is press A and just make sure the whole thing is selected. And then I'm going to press T and then I'm going to change this to linear and that way right now it's on Bezier. So I, if I change it to linear, it's just going to be moving the same speed the whole time. So you can see now it's just moving the same speed. Okay. Let's go back to the layout here and I'm going to press alt H to unhide that light because there was that light that we hid earlier. You can see that really makes the fog easier to see. So you could totally add lights just light up the fog a little bit. I think I might even change this to like a slightly blue color. It'll make the fog look kind of sci-fi bluish. Okay. And then I'm going to click on this, press shift D and duplicate it and make another one, maybe another one coming from this angle. But something that I want to do is make him look like he's in a little bit darker of it, like an atmosphere. So what I'm going to do is select this because this background is really bright. It's kind of making him look like he's in this kind of brighter sci-fi scene. What I want to do is make it darker. So I can just click on that background, go to the shading tab if you're not there already. And then right in here, you can see there's the building to the emission. I want to make that a darker color. So I'll press shift a, and I'm going to search for an RGB curves. And I'm just going to drop that right in there between the image texture and the emission. Now what I can do is on the C here, just pull this down and make it darker. Now you can see when I make it darker, you can still kind of see those control panels because they're brighter. So I want to make everything a little bit more even. So what I can do is just grab and pull out a dot here. And you can see if I pull this down and then pull this up, it's making the background a lot more even. Let me just select the smoke and then hide it so you can see it a little bit better. So you can see that kind of curve right there. It's making everything a bit more even of light. And then what I can do now that that's a bit more even is just, uh, press shift D on the uh, curves, bring them over and just drop them right after this one. And then I'm just going to select this and press X and delete it. Select this, press X and delete it. And then just bra drag this one down. And you can see now it's a lot darker. Now I'm just going to press alt H to unhide that. All right. Now I just went ahead and rendered this to see how it was looking and this doesn't look too bad, but when I go and watch the animation, you can see that there's a lot more smoke. So so when you're looking at it in Eevee, Eevee doesn't quite show you how it exactly looks. So I just wanted to make you aware that we're going to need to make the smoke a lot less visible than you might think that it is because it's kind of hard to see how that's actually looking. So I'm back in the shading tab here and I'm just going to go into rendered mode. I'm just going to actually drag, click and drag this and let go to get rid of that. Now the scale here, I'm going to change this to something like five and then just play around with this and make it pretty subtle. So I'm going to, make that back a little bit. So just play around with this color ramp until the smoke is pretty subtle and hard to see. And then if you want to get a better idea of how fast the animation is going, I'm going to control shift and click on the color ramp. And now if I play this, you can see how fast those little dots are moving. That's going to be how fast the smoke is going. So I want to make this a bit slower because it's a bit too fast. So just click right here and drag out because we're going to be adding that graph editor in there again. I'm just going to click right here go to the graph editor. And now what we can do is just make sure you have this selected and make sure the mapping is selected. So both of those, and then you can see here that this comes up. What I want to do is just 
press A to deselect everything, press B and box select this area, and then I want to bring it out. So I can press G, click with my middle mouse wheel until it constrains it sideways and then let go, bring it out, and then if I play that, you can see how fast it's moving. So just kind of look at that, kind of see how fast it's moving and get it to a speed that you like. So I'm going to make it a lot slower than that. So I'm just going to make it somewhere around there. I think that speed is pretty good. So I've kind of pulled this way out. So it takes longer to get to the end. Okay, so let's control shift and click back on the principled volume. So it'll go back to the default. Let's go back to layout here. And then if I just go in here and press play, you can see what it's looking like. So very subtle, but it's going to be easier to see when you've actually rendered it out. All right, so now let's go set an output for these images. So I'm just gonna click right here and you can see that we need to set an output for these images because we're gonna be rendering these out to images and then we're gonna throw them into Blender's video editor and video edit them together into the final animation. So just click right here and then just make a folder somewhere on your computer and throw the images into this. So I have just a rendered images and then just make the name nothing because I want the images to be 001, 002 and so on. And then just click this accept button and then i'm going to just be rendering these out to png that's the default uh, file format so just save this again go file and save and then i'm going to press Control f12 and that'll render out the final animation all right now while blender is rendering our animation i am going to be showing you the two sound effects that i'm going to use to really make this final render look really cool so this is freesound.org. I'm going to be using this wake up the robot sound effects. Uh, thank you to Plaster Brain for providing this and it's Creative Commons Zero. So that's super awesome. And then this other sound effects here, this drone sound effects, it's kind of, it's almost like music, kind of sounds like a drone, kind of some dark music. So if you want to download these, links will be in the video description. And this one is by Exhale303. So Thank you for making this sound effect. It's really great. And you can see this is under Creative Commons Zero License as well. So that's super awesome. So if you want to go ahead and download these, links will be in the video description. And if you've purchased this tutorial series, these sound effects are already going to be in your project files. You can just go ahead and snag them. All right. So I'm just going to go file and save this again. And then I'm going to go file and just open up a new general. So we're going to be using Blender's video editor to edit this together. Now, if you don't know how to do video editing in Blender and you'd like to learn how, I do have a Blender video editing tutorial series. There will be a link in the video description to that. But if you're somewhat unfamiliar with video editing in Blender, I'm just going to walk you through the basic things. So what you can do to get started is to scroll over here. I have this video editing tab right here. You can just click on plus and then you can click on video editing and click on video editing. I'm just going to hop over here. So now what I'm going to do is just move to frame one. You can see there's frame one right there. I'm going to press shift a now and I'm going to add the image sequence that we can add in those images that we rendered. So now you just need to navigate to those rendered images. And now I'm going to press a to select everything and then click on add image strip. And then I have the space bar set up to play. You can also press the play button and you can see here's how it looks. Now, if for some reason your smoke doesn't look how you like it, you could go back and change the smoke and then re-render it. But I like how this looks. Now, this animation was 400 frames long, so I'm going to change the end right here to 400. Uh, just make the end frame however long your animation is. Now, I am going to be adding in those two sound effects that I just talked about. So I'm just going to open up my file browser and drag them in. So my file browser is right next to me. I'm just going to drag and drop in these two sound effects. So now I'm just going to move the sound to somewhere where I like. So this down here, this is kind of the ambient dark kind of sound. And then this up here, this is like the robot little beeping sounds. So I want to have this sound one more time. So I'm going to select it, press shift D to duplicate it. Okay. Now to render this animation out to a final video, I'm going to scroll down here and then I'm going to set an output here. I just have this set as my desktop. So I'm just going to type in like final animation. You can just click on this file browser here and then put it wherever you want on your computer. Now right here you can see the file format. We don't want PNGs of course. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to use FFmpeg video. Now just some things that I like to use. The container I like to use MPEG4 and then if I open up the audio and video I like to use the video codec of H.264 and I just leave these at medium quality and good. And then right down here on the audio codec I usually use MP3 for the audio codec. But if you're going to be watching this final animation on an Apple device, so like an iPad, an iPhone, or like a Mac computer, um, I found that the MP3 format doesn't work because I've tried sending some videos to some friends who have like a Mac computer or have like an iPhone or something, 
and they've told me that they can't hear the audio on that device. So I was playing around with it and I used the AAC format and then I sent them the video and then they were able to hear it. Now the thing that I don't like about the AAC format is that whenever I upload a video to YouTube, the YouTube servers can't finish processing the AAC audio codec. So when I upload the video, it just uploads and then it just sits there and processes and can't finish. So I usually use MP3 to upload it to YouTube, but if I'm sending this video to someone who is using like a Mac computer or maybe has an iPad or an iPhone, I'll use AAC. So I'm just gonna use MP3 in this case. We can press Control F12 and that'll render out the final animation. So here we go, this is the finished final animation. So if you've made it this far through the entire tutorial series, then congratulations, because it's a pretty big tutorial series. So I hope your result turned out really well, and I hope you are happy with it. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial series. And if you upload your final images or final animations somewhere online, you can definitely leave me a link in the comments so I can check out your finished tutorial result. And with that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in a future tutorial.